paghi. Okay. There we have everyone. Thanks for waiting, everyone. Uh, we'll give it just a few more seconds as I see the uh, participants list climb here. We're just waiting for one of our co-hosts to join us uh, and then we will get started, but this shouldn't put us over our uh, 30 to 35 minute mark. So thanks again for waiting. Just a few more seconds. Okay, we are just waiting for one of our co-hosts to come. He's from our uh, one of our uh, vendors that we use for one of these sponsorships. Um, if he is not here in time, we'll just move along with the uh, with the presentation. So, um, I'm Rocco Pacella. I'm the marketing manager here at PitCon, and this is our um, official kickoff. Even though sponsorships opened last week, to our 2022 sponsorship um, offering. So, I'd like to thank everyone for attending, uh, whether you're a registered exhibitor or not. Um, as always, uh, your participation here in PitCon directly funds our philanthropic outreach and educational activities, which is actually part of our mission. Um, I urge you to please keep a lookout as we go forward here and move towards PitCon 2022 in March uh, for articles and posts regarding our philanthropic activities. Uh, and in the meantime, feel free to visit pitcon.org slash philanthropy uh, to find out more. Now, I know many of you are wondering this because we always get this question. The presentation will certainly be made available after the webinar so that you can all reference this. Um, if you have time uh, during, after the presentation, uh, please feel free to visit our entire sponsorship listing. Uh, if you're a registered exhibitor, it's gonna be in your exhibitor console. Uh, regardless, registered or not, you can get there also by visiting pitcon.org slash exhibitor. So we have all uh, three panelists here, myself included, and we are ready to move on with the webinar. Um, we will be taking questions after the webinar. You can feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to speak, or you could send that via chat and we have uh, the Pittsburgh Conference um, Zoom account monitoring those. Okay, so our presenters today. Uh, today, after me, we're going to have Mike Kesserling speak about our digital, he's our digital sponsorship strategist from Feather, uh, speaking about our retargeting sponsorship. We're very excited about that. And uh, from the Georgia World Congress Center, which is where our uh, event is going to be held in March, we've got Blake Jenkins, event technology manager, who has saved me many times uh, in ramping up to this sponsorship webinar, and Mark Geiger, the GWCC's business development uh, director. Uh, from the Georgia Aquarium, we were going to have John Walker, who's our senior sales manager, uh, join us today, but he is actually on assignment at the Georgia Aquarium, so I'll be speaking quickly about the sponsorships for our PitCon party at that venue. Then, of course, me, Rocco Pacella, marketing manager here at PitCon. Uh, just a review of our content today. We're going to go first over the retargeted digital advertising by Feather. Uh, next, our in-show opportunities from the Georgia World Congress Center. Uh, I will chime in there at the end of that as well before we move into PitCom party sponsorships for the Georgia Aquarium. And then at the end, finally, we'll be taking questions and answers. So 
Mike, if you're ready, uh, you can probably share the screen from your uh, computer now. If not, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll stop sharing ours. Sounds good, Rocco. Um, I'm unable to share my video. Um, I can share my screen though. If, uh... Okay, yeah, screen's fine. I'm glad to have everybody here and excited to be talking about what my company specializes in, which is ad retargeting. Uh, Feather is located in Gainesville, Florida, got about 100 employees. Uh, we are a digital marketing toolkit for associations and event organizers. Um, so we basically provide digital marketing tools that can help grow membership and events. And in this case, give partners and sponsors like yourselves access to the audience in the form of digital ad retargeting. Um, and so we are talking about giving you the opportunity to reach the world of laboratory science all year, uh, not just during the live event, but um, reach them virtually on their laptops, uh, desktops, tablets, and cell phones. Um, and so we are offering trackable digital exposure um, that will give you a lot of freedom and creativity with your marketing efforts uh, to a specific audience. So... I'm um, going to dive right in here. I understand that one of the biggest challenges is that, um, you know, you would love to be able to get up on stage or do a power session, webinar, breakout session to talk about exactly, you know, what you offer, product, services, and to get your brand in front of the, uh, the PitCon audience. Um, but unfortunately, at the trade shows, not every attendee will be able to visit your booth. And um, we also have you know, people that aren't able to attend the show. So we've got a lot of people in this universe that are very valuable for you to reach with your brand products and services. So ad retargeting allows you to reach those analytic chemists online with your value proposition. So whatever it is you might be promoting at your booth, uh, you can parlay this into a virtual marketing effort through ad retargeting. So um, the basics of, of what exactly is ad retargeting, um, it's a form of advertising. So it's a new channel, just like emails or, you know, banners on websites, things like that. So um, we've got someone visiting the PitCon website, which our software is tracking. Um, and then at that point, we will place a cookie on their website browser that allows us to then serve ads to them as they are off perusing the internet. So um, they may go visit the New York Times or weather.com, Yahoo, um, Facebook, you know, any number of sites and apps that we're able to serve them digital ads. And uh, we're not necessarily gonna be promoting PitCon, we're allowing you, the sponsor, to promote yourself to this BitCon audience. So like I mentioned, we place a, a small piece of internet code uh, called cookies on the website browsers of the, uh, the, the unique visitors. And then as they are off um, browsing the internet, basically exhibitors like yourself are going to have your ads served to them, promoting specific digital content on your website or just your brand and your value proposition. So it all starts at the BitCon website. Uh, tracking those visitors. And then as they go off, we are able to serve them ads. Um, this will allow you to market your brand across 95% of the consumer web. So um, it really depends on where the PitCon audience were to go. So rather than picking specific sites, placing your website banner on those sites and waiting for PitCon uh, audience to go visit those pages, we're just going to serve your ad on the pages that they visit uh, naturally. So um, this is super effective because you're essentially taking your in-person efforts and you're bringing them into the digital world. And so your, your advertisement can act as a virtual booth. Um, like I said, anything you're promoting at your booth, you can put into an ad and link them directly to your site. So this is going to promote your brand and help you reach a very targeted audience. Uh, you can do ad retargeting on sites like Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, but you're going to be reaching a broader audience, might be a little more vague, not as segmented, and not as specific as the PitCon audience. So you can actually target prospects who can purchase your product or service. And this targeted audience with a compelling message will give you a better ROI across other channels. Um, it's really important that you keep your brand top of mind. If you can imagine reaching your target customer while they are researching your competitor, it's a very valuable thing to be able to do. So whether they are ready to purchase or if they are just doing uh, consideration, research, pricing, um, no matter what, you want to keep your brand in front of them as often as possible so that when they are doing research or when they are ready to purchase, your brand is on the top of their mind. So if you can condense your value prop into a compelling message and you can consistently keep that in front of the right person, you're going to see high click-through rates 
and greater website engagement on your own site. Um, who is a good fit to use this sort of ad retargeting with Pitcon? It's gonna be any company that is promoting digital content to this audience. So if you have uh, webinars, videos, um, if you're producing case studies, if you have industry research or just a regular old blog article, um, that's the sort of content that you are producing on your site with analytical chemists as the target. And so your challenge is probably getting the right eyeballs to come to that page and engage with your content. So that is the challenge that we are solving here. I see Madeline, Madeline has a question. Does Feather provide analytics reporting on how many times these retargeted ads have been viewed and clicked? Thank you for asking. I believe that is our next slide. So here on the right is a screenshot of the reporting that you will receive once your campaign begins. This gives you tracking and analytics the moment your campaign begins. So if you were to run, for instance, a six month digital retargeting campaign, uh, the link would come to you the day before the campaign goes live. You can bookmark the page and you can access that report at any time. So you can refresh it as often as you like and you can see those numbers go up in real time. So you can track the views, which is any time your ad has been displayed on the screen to this specific Pitcon audience. You can see clicks, which is the total number of times your ad has been clicked. Um, and then the click-through rates right beneath that. Um, you've got the unique clicks, which is the unique number of individual people who click the ad. And then reach is the total number of individual people that have either seen or clicked your ad. Uh, you also get an activity breakdown of the top sites or ad networks used to display your ad, which is the bottom left activity breakdown. A um, couple talking points here is that there's no login required. So you can share this with your sales, your marketing team, your executive team, and anybody that wants to keep tabs on this specific campaign has access to that at all times. Um, you might've done pay-per-click on Google where you are essentially paying Google every time they provide a click uh, through your ad, but this is not like that. We are paying for a set number of impressions. And so you can get as many clicks as you like, and we have an unlimited click model. Um, also, if you want to differentiate and keep track of who is coming to your website from different marketing campaigns, maybe you're doing email marketing, content marketing, social, um, you can provide us with a UTM tracking code, which will replace the destination URL. So instead of just giving us uh, the link to the landing page on your website, you can create a UTM code that lets you keep track of how many people are coming to your site from this specific campaign compared to your other marketing efforts. That's super important to track ROI and any other metrics that are super important to you. Uh, getting started is really simple. We just wanna schedule a strategy call with the PitCon team and myself. Uh, we wanna talk about what your specific goals with this campaign would be. If you are a smaller company that just wants brand awareness, or if maybe you're a more well-known company that wants to promote specific uh, webinars, case studies, and that sort of thing. Um, we can actually help with lead generation if your site is set up to receive uh, you know, new leads, uh, if you have, either a way to gate content, for instance, download this late, latest ebook, first you need to provide your name and email address. Uh, we can walk you through how to do some of those things. Um, and then also pre and post show is super important with this effort. You wanna promote your attendance at the, the show. Maybe if you wanna offer uh, some product uh, at your booth and you want to garner interest, this is a good way to promote this pre-show. And then also nurturing leads of people you've met after the show. It's really good to keep your brand in front of them the following months after the show. Um, so ad retargeting campaigns will include ad design. Uh, Rocco, did you have anything? No, you know what? I got to uh, say that we've been working with Feather uh, for what, three or four years now. And I am so excited that we're able to offer this retargeting to people that are uh, to our exhibitors here, because we've done a lot to build that uh, the base for this. Uh, without saying too much, there's a lot to, to grasp with this. We've done a lot over the years to build that. And uh, we're, we're just really excited to share this with everyone. It is such, uh, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, such a cool thing to be able to offer. So thanks, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess just final note was the, the three sort of components of this. Um, we will design two sets of ads for you. So if you wanna promote one webinar and then a blog article, we can design uh, six total graphics for you, uh, three graphics for each set. So that would be six total graphics. And then we will also uh, launch the campaign for you as well as provide the reporting link. And then after that, our campaign manager will be checking in periodically throughout the campaign to ensure that you're getting um, the click-through rate that we're looking for 
or if there are any suggestions that can be made to updating the artwork or the landing page if you're looking for lead generation and things like that. So um, beyond just you know access to the audience, you're also getting uh, sort of a digital marketing digital marketing consultancy as well, uh, just sort of free of charge to help make sure that your campaign is successful. So I will go ahead and stop sharing and pass it back over to you, Rocco. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you, Mike. Um, Blake from the Georgia World Congress Center. Uh, if you'd like to share your screen now, uh, we can just move ahead. Uh, again, any questions you have, feel free to say them. We'll take them at the end. I know that we've received a few now and we're happy to answer them as we go forward here. But uh, we will definitely take all questions at the end as well. Uh, go ahead, Blake. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rocco. Blake Jenkins and uh, with my colleague here, Mark Geiger. Um, as he said, we handle the sponsorships here inside the building as well as a few outside. Um, but we'll kind of go through our slides here. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Mark Geiger because he loves to talk. I'm just kind of <laughs> a tech guy and I'm going to let him uh, do his rambling. I can talk. Um but uh, thanks, Rocco. So what Blake did, he provided me with a, a list of uh, a lot of the uh, things that we had available here at the Congress Center. I mean, literally, you could have hundreds of things in a four million square foot facility, as you know. But you narrowed it down to uh, probably some of the better ones that we do have available. And I was able to gather the uh, images of, of each of those because we've been collecting photos of the uh, sponsorship that we've uh, been doing since 2008. So one of the first ones that you uh, wanted to offer your exhibitors and partners was uh, one, or actually there's a few of the uh, billboards that we had. This one here is outside of the uh, B building. It's actually outside of the uh, Thomas Murphy ballroom and it's a 48 foot by 14 foot digital billboard. And we offer 40 seconds out of a 120 second loop and again, that can change just depending on what else we have going up there. And again, it all depends on what the uh, what the interest level is, and we can always make it uh, make more uh, more spots available. And uh, normally shows will do uh, ten second increments, but I've seen it done any different way, and we're willing to uh, work with shows to do it the way they want to. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the other uh, billboards just up the road a little bit more. And no, this is on the A building right uh, across from State Farm Arena. And it's a smaller billboard. It's 36 foot by 10 and a half foot. Uh, and then moving inside the building, here's a uh, building B. So we have 26 uh, individual monitors just in building B alone. And uh, we offer 100 seconds on each of those 26 monitors. And the monitors are on each level of the B building. And these are three of the five locations that we have in uh, PitCon is offering three because it's obviously inside your area where the majority of your attendees will be. And uh, what you're looking at is the registration area, the B building registration on the left there. And then on the far right is the A side of registration hall. And then in the middle coming from the lobby down into the B building is uh, another LED wall. And these walls are 11 and a half foot by six and a half foot and uh, just generate a lot of uh, impact because of where they're located. And we offer 100 seconds out of 180 seconds uh, on those three LED D walls. And I know a lot of folks would like to know where these are located. And this is kind of hard to see. But these are maps of the B building. And you'll see there's a key indicator showing you where each of the LED walls are and where the monitors are, which way they're facing. So each where you see the yellow arrows and the way the arrow is pointing is where the screen is facing. So each of these yellow circles in the arrows indicate where those monitors 26 monitors are and these orange ones indicate where the uh led walls are and the big orange one here is where the billboard is now this is that first billboard i showed you on the b building and as you go down through the building as you can see i guess what i'm trying to show you is we're on each and every level in the uh in the center and when someone does uh and you may be asking yourself hey i'd like those three monitors we package these all together. It's like one channel. And so when you have the monitors, you get all 26 monitors. And uh, moving along. Now, these are uh, 55 inch mobile screens. And the reason we added these to our inventory is we 
we used to get a lot of folks saying, hey, I really like something here or something there. And I said, hey, this is the answer. You plug this in, stick a USB in the back and you're good to go. And it, it can play video. It can play uh, just uh, single digital uh, images, uh, MP4s or JPEGs. And uh, we have 20 of these. And again, great, uh, great tool where you can plug it in, turn it, lock it down, and you can move it around to wherever you uh, like during the course of the event or the day that is. And you can see a few images how these have been used in the past. Uh, in the in the past, uh, directional, you know, ha have been used. Uh, folks have used these in their in their booths on the show floor. But uh, there's been several different uses uh, of these of these 55 inch monitors. And uh, one other thing you can add on the bottom of these monitors are uh, something called a spider mat. And some of you folks may have seen these before. You can stick it on there and you can pull it off and a little bit of water on the back of it will clean it back up and you can stick it back on there on there again and uh just a, a really cool way because the bottom of these uh 55 inch screens it's glass also and these uh clings fit really well on the bottom of the uh the monitors now what we uh, have here are outside of each of our 120 uh meeting rooms we have 53 or uh, 43 inch screens now these screens uh, can be utilized in several different ways, but the majority of uh, the folks that do utilize these screens, they use it for letting folks know what's going on inside there or putting the agenda on the screen. And this can be done through. Hey, Mark. Yes, sir. Can I interrupt you right there? Absolutely. We um, are not offering the meeting room screens because those are um, program rooms and mm -hmm. uh, we just, you know, we don't offer those because we do have a lot of conflict with um, those. So I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Uh, we were initially looking at those and um, we are now not. That is a new development. So I apologize for not letting you know that, Mark. Oh, hey, no, not an issue. And again, I apologize. And, and I didn't tell you this up front, too. This is my second day back at the Congress Center. I was here for 13 years. Hey, welcome something, back. Something, I appreciate that. Something called COVID came along and I was gone for 17 months, but I'm really psyched to be back. And uh, I created this program back in uh, 2008, and we, along with Blake and CCLD and all, all these other folks, uh, we built a great program. And like I said, it's uh, just uh, one of those things. It's like I, I left my babies, but now I got them back again. So I'm psyched about that. But yeah, not an issue on the uh, signage. We can just put up one image for the, uh, the entire uh, conference for your, for your folks. But uh, moving along. We have a lot of escalators in this 4 million square foot facility and in the uh, B building, there's 21 available. And uh, we utilize uh, what's called an escalator runner as and you can see, they go down the, uh, the uh, middle of the, uh, the slide, if you will. And uh, like I said, there's 21 of them and uh, you get a lot of eyeballs uh, watching these things because everyone's using the escalators and we usually use a PVC because a lot of people like to touch things and they spill things, but uh, they, they're, they're great for the duration of the event and get a lot of eyeballs. Um, this is as your, this viewpoint is as you're departing from the B building, going back up to the lobby. But uh, what it is, it's a package uh, that we've put together many times for uh, many shows and what it is is the stairs on both sides. I believe that's 27 steps going up that can create an image from this vantage point. And then you've got four escalator runners and then going up the center, we, they're kind of like planner stands is what those are. But the uh, middle face is uh, you can put imagery on there. So it's, it's a nice package that really generates a lot of attention. Uh, if, if done well with uh, the right artwork, it can really uh, capture a lot of attention. And after all, that's what you're trying to do is capture attention and generate uh, stopping power and have people look at your uh, message. And this is at the top of the stairs that we were just looking at. Uh, a couple of these are the, uh, the uh, column wraps. And uh, the other one is going up uh, in the Thomas Murphy. Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's Thomas Murphy. You can tell I've been gone for 17 months. The um, but the column wraps uh, we there's so many columns throughout the uh, B building and throughout the convention center, but they're all open. And again, we'll work with Rocco and everyone else to determine which columns you want to use because they come in all different shapes and sizes. And some people may want to use half of a column, maybe may want to use the whole column. But again, we'll work with folks to uh, generate the uh, artwork that meets their needs. Now these are floor clings and we can put them on the carpet or the terrazzo 
and again, what we usually do are rectangles, arrows, squares, and circles, and pretty self-explanatory uh, what they are, flings that go on the carpet. And we got a lot of doors too in this building. And uh, these are these are great uh, ways to generate interest and generate uh, information. And Rocco, I'm not sure if we can go double-sided or just one-sided, but uh, I, I believe one-sided, huh? Uh, we, Where you can do double-sided? Do double right. Some shows, uh, they're not permitted to show information outside the building. I wasn't sure if this was one of those, but these are double-sided uh, clings that go on the, uh, the uh, doors. And something else that we have is the um, hand sanitizers throughout the facility that you can put posters in. And then also as you're entering the uh, B building, there's an opportunity. We have three different uh, areas where you can place banners as you're coming down the uh, escalator. And they, they usually generate a lot of attention also. And again, it's uh, right below where that LED screen is as you enter the building. Uh, Rocco, I'm not sure if this was on your list because there's a couple things we weren't sure about. And one of them was uh, yeah, clings. We, we did not do the sidewalk uh, graphics just because there was a, a conflict that um, uh, there was some conflict with those. So we did not do those. However, we do have the indoor. Gotcha. Um, the floor clings. We did not do the beams. Okay. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if you saw the beams or were aware of them. And that was something else that was at the end. And one other thing that... Um, I didn't know if uh, this was ever presented to you too, but I will talk about it later what that is. And uh, that's all from our side. Thanks guys. Um, lots of stuff there, as you see. Um, can everyone see my screen? Okay. I'm going to just stop sharing and then reshare. There we go. Perfect. Seamless transition. Okay. Um, I will go through these. Uh, oh, let me throw my camera on back here. Sorry. I will go through these rather quickly. I know a lot of you have seen these. Uh, we've sent out an email about these. Um, and uh, you can see these through the website, pitcon.org slash exhibitor, as well as your exhibitor console. But here we have entrance sponsorships. Um, those are my, there we go. Everything's delayed. Our attendee registration badge. We're not doing a lanyard this year. I know many of you asked if we're doing lanyards. We are not this year. Uh, we are doing, however, we are keeping the attendee registration badge and your ad will be at the bottom of that. Uh, that is given to all attendees and media uh, registered for PitCon, not exhibitors. Uh, we have the shuttle bus claims. Those are massive. They're like two feet by 34 foot banner um, on the side of the shuttle buses that take people from the hotels to the um, ex exposition hall. We have our PitCon press room, which that is a stock photo that I used. Um, that is uh, placing, we, we, we have bags that we give all members of the media in that bag. There's a flash drive. There's the uh, ability to put your press kit on that flash drive along with ours. There's the ability, we're gonna have stickers on the bags with your logo on it as a sponsor. And then of course, a sign sponsoring uh, available options for refreshments in the press room. And then of course, our souvenir bag and booth drop. Uh, I believe everyone knows what those are, but souvenir bags, everyone gets a bag at registration and you can place your flyer in there. Uh, the booth drop is, uh, there's only a few of those available and that is uh, placing your flyer uh, at every booth uh, on the exposition floor. That's mainly a business to business type of uh, sponsorship there. Uh, next, our exposition sponsorships. These are sponsorships on the exposition floor. Again, I'm going fast for a reason. I wanna keep everyone, everyone's afternoon free here after this. Hand sanitization stations, uh, advertise while people sanitize. I don't think I need to say any more than that. Uh, carpet floor clings, these are in the main aisles. Uh, these are four by four uh, clings. Uh, really helps with uh, directional signage to your booth. Uh, the Your Company's Headshot Lounge. Uh, if I wanna get the Rocco Corp Headshot Lounge, I can do that. This is a major engagement opportunity. We had this uh, at PitCon 2020. So many people used that there were lines. Uh, this includes a carpet sticker at the lounge. This includes a branded email uh, with everyone's headshot in it sent directly to them. And then the uh, little iPad stations that they have 
will also be branded. Everyone needs to sign up uh, their email to get their headshot. So that's where they do it. Major opportunity there. And then of course the uh, park seating area, as you know, the Pickon Park is sort of in the center of the, the expo floor. Uh, this is an area where people uh, generally sit to recharge both themselves and their phones. Uh, so we're gonna have branded opportunities there uh, for floor clings, uh, a, a, a banner sign, and I believe clings on the recharging tables themselves. Next, our digital sponsorship. So we have the new product spotlight, new last year, very popular. Of course, we were in virtual. We are continuing this one because a lot of people asked uh, if we were gonna do this again. That includes a dedicated uh, Facebook campaign for the new product uh, campaign as a whole. Uh, that is a dedicated email or two, I believe, to all of our uh, active and prospective attendees. Uh, that list can reach upwards near 80 to 100,000. And um, there is uh, placement in the final program, which everyone gets. Our attendee registration package, that is engaging attendees right as they register. As you see there, there's the confirmation. Uh, there's a sponsored banner ad right there uh, that all attendees receive. Um, the attendee e-blast banner, uh, those are bi-weekly emails that we're going to start sending out. And this is simply having your hyperlink banner in that email. Uh, you can engage with, with attendees directly uh, through those. And then, of course, our, our app sponsorships. App notifications sent out or, you know, push notifications, I mean, uh, or simply a banner ad. Uh, and our attendee registration package as of uh, a few days ago was sold. Uh, and then my favorite print sponsorships. Um, we have our final program. Uh, I'd say almost all attendees pick these up. Um, the final program, we're gonna have full page, half page, quarter page ads. Um, we're uh, hoping to sell inside covers as well, inside back and front covers as well. Um, and of course our floor plan. This is something that we're doing new for this year, uh, for PitCon 2022, excuse me. And we are going to have that sort of, uh, if you could see there, there's the gray lines above uh, at the top and the bottom of the floor plan. That's where logos are gonna be. We're trying to make this a more cost effective, cost sensitive. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, my production team here is speaking to me saying, the floor plan replaces the PitCon pocket guide. Uh, so what was the pocket guide before? We are now doing that uh, ourselves. That's gonna be the PitCon floor plan. And of course, some of it's the final program, but the floor plan is really replacing the pocket guide. So you are able to place your logo there, your booth location. Again, a, a cost sensitive um, you know, offering for exhibitors of all sizes. And I will go quickly into the PitCon party. Uh, we're very excited about this. The Georgia Aquarium is one of the largest aquaria in the world. I believe it is the largest in the United States, if not the Western Hemisphere. So, of course, we had to have the PitCon party there. There's a picture. Uh, that party is going to be Tuesday, March 8th, the evening of Tuesday, March 8th, after PitCon, of course. Uh, we're, we're really, really excited about this because uh, we have a lot of great opportunities. We've been working with them a lot uh, to make these opportunities uh, a reality. So, quickly going through, we are offering different levels uh, this year to start. We have a platinum level. That level includes an atrium bar, uh, which is branded, which, uh, you know, our idea is having uh, people in lab coats with your logo on it. Um, this is up to you. Uh, we, you'll be working with their uh, event staff directly and with us uh, to figure out what kind of bar opportunity uh, works best. Uh, that includes also swimming with the sharks. So this is, you know, extremely exciting. I've used that word a few times, but you can offer off essentially four chances to uh, swim with the sharks, which is technically in a cage for safety uh, reasons. But you, uh, the people that you choose, whether they're people visiting your booth, uh, whether they're people that you want to give this to prior to PitCon and say, come to PitCon, however you do it, you have four of these uh, to give away and uh, they get to go in a specific time that we're, we're gonna set aside. We have to work with them on that. During PitCon, they get dunked into the shark tank in the, in the cage. Um, I've had a few staff members here ask if they can do that. I personally, uh, you know, 
I think it's a pretty great opportunity. And your staff and two attendees from PitCon that you choose, again, you can offer these off, get a lab tour in the chemistry lab at the Georgia Aquarium right before the PitCon party. Uh, next, we have our gold sponsorship. So this is our VIP area, which is on the overlook. I'll show you a map after these uh, slides here. VIP area, area over the, uh, the main atrium where the bar is going to be. So this is a create your own space. The sponsorship is getting the space. Then you can, uh, as the sponsor, uh, get your own food, get your own drink, uh, have your own furniture up there. The, the, the aquarium is willing and able to work with you on that. So that's kind of creating your own mini party within the PitCon party. We're also going to have our PitCon president show up uh, and, you know, talk to everyone there uh, if you want that. And I will say about the platinum uh, sponsorship, you're also going to get your the ability to create your own drink. So we said lab coats. It's, you know, you could create a drink that's uh, served in a test tube that's blue uh, or whatever color. Um, so there's that opportunity. Uh, next is our silver sponsorship. There's the Ocean Voyager. The Ocean Voyager is one of the main, the largest exhibit at the um, Georgia Aquarium. And that is the, as you can see there, the acrylic tunnel. So that's actually used, you've seen that in movies. Uh, the acrylic tunnel is you walk through that. And the thing that we're, um, I think this is just, just great, is you're gonna get the branding of the Ocean Voyager. Um, you're going to then have, uh, part of that is a, an interactive diver. That diver's uh, quite literally going to be in that um, area where the tunnel is, knocking on the, the tunnel itself, not too hard. Um, and when they you know, get people's attention who's uh, attending the, the, the party, they're gonna show them a sign, an underwater sign with your logo on it as the sponsor of the um, Ocean Voyager exhibition and our silver sponsor. That, however, has just been sold. So I hope that everyone takes advantage of the, the platinum and the gold uh, sponsorships that are available. But if that's not what you're looking for, you can sponsor individual exhibits. The sea lion exhibit, um, the sharks exhibit, which includes the exclamation point, um, the river scout exhibit, which is where the sea otters are, and the cold water quest exhibit are all at the $1,500 level. Um, those are branding entrance to the exhibit as the sponsor of say, the sharks exhibit, as the sponsor of the river scout exhibit and so forth. Uh, we have the dolphin exhibit, uh, that's less because that's not as high traffic, but everyone loves dolphins. Um, so you can sponsor that for around $1,000. And then we have our aquarium rotunda, which is again, uh, our more cost sensitive uh, sponsorship. That is the uh, area, the seating cafe area within the um, the back of the atrium at the Georgia Aquarium. And that's having your logo in that area on these uh, screens like that. Then, of course, we have the drink tokens. Uh, one of our exhibitors uh, gave us this idea and we're happy to uh, use it. Um, you can buy drink tokens if the person, if the attendee is attending the pick on party, give them a drink token, the drinks on you. Those are each going to be, uh, those are gonna have your logo on those as well. Um, and we will have more information of those as sizing and everything um, in the exhibitor console. So real quick, you can see the Georgia Aquarium layout. Uh, you could go to georgiaaquarium.org slash visitor hyphen map. Um, here, just to give you a quick overview, this arrow, is the central atrium. That's where the party, the center of the party is gonna be. The great thing about the Georgia Aquarium is that it's all centered around this atrium. All exhibits start and end with uh, the atrium, uh, as you can see. The next one, this is our gold membership. This area right here where that arrow is, is above the Sharks uh, exhibition. It's safe though. Above the Sharks exhibition, overlooking the main atrium, that's where the gold sponsorship VIP overlook area will be. And then next we have the Ocean Voyager. That's where the interactive diver is gonna be. Again, one of the largest aquarium exhibits in the world. Uh, that's where the whale shark is. That's where the manta rays are, the sea turtles, you name it, it's in there. Uh, next we have, this is the aquarium rotunda area. Again, this is like a seating area for everyone. So people are gonna go there during the party, sit down, have a drink. Uh, if they're not standing in the atrium area. And this is where we're offering, you know, one shot type of, um, 
TV monitor based, uh, excuse me, roving monitor based uh, sponsorships. And then here, just a slew of arrows coming in. Uh, this is the exhibitions themselves. That's the, you know, Coldwater Quest, where the penguins are, Dolphin Coast, self-explanatory, the River Scout, where the sea otters are, uh, Pier 225, where the sea lions are, and then, of course, the sharks ex exhibition. So everything, as you see, is centered around this main area. So I talked really fast there. I know we're going to get some questions, uh, but uh, to review sponsorships, please visit pitcon.org slash exhibitor. Uh, if you are reserving a sponsorship, A, you have to be a registered exhibitor. So you can um, email expo at pitcon.org. But while you're a registered exhibitor, you can just uh, reserve your sponsorships in the exhibitor console. And finally, to request uh, any information on sponsorships outside of this webinar, you can email me directly at pacella at pitcon.org. Um, I'd like to thank all of you. We're a little, we're five minutes over. So thank you again for, for sticking around. If there's any questions, please raise your hand. You can speak or send us a chat. All right. Well, there are no questions. So either, oh, wait, my production team is telling me we did get a couple, so. Our lobby banner is still available. Oh, our lobby banner is still available. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we, yeah, there we go. You're getting an echo because Scott's right here with me. Yes, lobby banners are still available. Um, we have entrance banners that the Georgia World Congress uh, Center uh, has offered us. Those are right above the expo entrance. Uh, we have a few of those left. Uh, we have a few of them taken already. And then we also have flag banners, which are in the main concourse area leading down to the expo floor. Uh, those are, as they suggest, flag banners. They're on the side of a column. They stick out. But we also have banners right along the balconies that are there. These are all in the exhibitor console. Um, <clears throat> and the, that exhibitor, the sponsorship listing is public. So if you go to pitcon.org slash exhibitor and you're not a registered exhibitor, you can access that listing and just preview everything and get a review of it. Um, so yes, we do have physical banners still available. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So we got another question. When will sponsorships close? Sponsorships, uh, some of them will stay open a while. Um, there's ones that we can handle up until maybe a week or two before I believe. Uh, however, some of them will close early because of uh, production time uh, and things like that. So uh, it's really relevant to the sponsorship itself. So um, if you are looking at a sponsorship and the closing date is not uh, apparent in the description, you can email me, you can email marketing at pitcon.org, you can email expo at pitcon.org. And we will, uh, well, they'll probably send me the email and I'll answer that for you. So uh, each one is, is going to be different. Uh, okay, so one other thing before we go, I, we did get some questions about press conferences. Uh, there was a press room sponsorship. And uh, as I explained before, so that kind of reminded me to answer this question. Press conferences, if any of you are interested in them, will open next week. Uh, we are just finalizing the rooms and set up right now. Uh, we will have um, information out to you sent via email in an exhibitor uh, e-blast. So again, I appreciate everyone for sticking around today. Thank you to Mike. Thank you to Blake and Mark uh, from Feather and the uh, Georgia World Congress uh, Center, respectively. Uh, and I hope you all have a good day. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all uh, March 5 through 9, 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you.